today we are going to break down a side of beef. Hey guys, Diane Daniel here. I am so excited we finally got this on video. This is so awesome. We're gonna do a left side of beef today, and the left side has been divided into the hind quarter and the fore quarter. And then from there, you actually can break down those two parts into eight different primals. And today we're actually gonna start with the front end. We'll start with our chuck and move all the way through the round. So if you're ready, get set and let's go. So here's the chuck brisket. And the first thing that we need to do is separate these two primals. We do that where the first rib meets the sternum over top of the brisket. Once we've separated it, we now need to go ahead and take off the brisket. And we do that between a seam underneath the web muscle, also known as the point of the brisket, but above the clod. We don't want to get too deep or we could actually cut into the clod, which would obviously be a big mistake. Now I'm just going to take this piece and... Uh, yep, that was heavy. No big deal. Okay, so here I'm actually going to come in and cut off these chuck short ribs. And what I'll do is make a parallel cut with the saw from the edge that Daniel cut off that brisket. And while she's doing that, I'm going to be taking off the sternum off of the top of the brisket. No one's ever heard of a bone-in brisket because that doesn't exist. We need to go ahead and get that bone off of the brisket to reveal our decal off boneless brisket. And now I'm just gonna come in and follow that first rib and pull back these chuck short ribs. Man, this sounds incredible. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and take off these neck bones. This is definitely the most challenging part, but for me it's the most fun because I just try to improve every single time I do it. Now that I have those neck bones off, I'm gonna roll the chuck roll off this primal. Why am I doing all the hard stuff? Well, all right, so you just gotta follow this seam right here in order to roll it off. Uh, it's pretty simple. You actually let gravity help you hold this down. When we remove the brisket from the chuck, we actually leave a little bit of the pectoralis muscle on the chuck, which for those that don't speak Latin, this is gonna be called our pec meat. Now the pec meat makes some amazing chicken, I mean, I mean country fried steak when you bread it and fry it. Now I'm just removing this big heavy ligament off the back of the chuck roll. That actually helps hold that big heavy beef head up. So once I remove that, I can come in and break off the chuck flap, cutting about one inch away from that longissimus dorsi. And now I've got this big, beautiful block of boneless short ribs. Those look amazing. Oh, I know. I'm pulling out the mock tender here, and the mock tender is actually kind of tucked into the scapula. So we have to get our knife in there and kind of work around it. And the mock tender is also sometimes called the chuck tender, which is definitely different than the petite tender or the terrace major. Don't get those two confused. They have completely different eating experiences. While he's doing that, I'm just working up some extra trim. Got a lot of trim from the chuck, but it makes some great ground chuck. And I'm pulling out the Vegas steak, which actually sits on top of the scapula, and it is very similar to, say, the flat iron. So now I'm just going to remove the shank from the shoulder clod. So I'll just trace my knife down that humerus bone, funniest bone in the carcass, by the way, and you got to make sure you don't use that bone for a stock because it's just going to be a laughing stock. <laughs> just going to pop through that ball and socket joint right there. And it's released. She passes that to me so I can actually remove uh, the flat iron is what my end goal here. And the flat iron sets right underneath the scapula. This is probably my favorite part of the carcass fabrication because quite frankly, it makes me feel strong. You can go in here, kind of trace along the scapula, trace underneath this. And then I grab onto the end of it and pull this thing up and break that bone right in half. He is strong. Since we removed the scapula, what we're left with is our whole clod. Now, we need to separate this into some different parts. And to start with, I'm removing the top blade. Now, the top blade is where our flat irons lived. And that's where we're gonna separate, there's a nice seam that separates our top blade from our clod heart. So that's where I'm gonna give this to Diana to trim up a little bit more. 
I'm removing the terrace major. Now, typically the terrace major would not be left on a whole clod. When you buy these in, that's gonna be removed at the plant. The terrace major actually is probably one of my favorite cuts. It's very tender. And once we get that done, we're going to go ahead and just finish trimming up uh, the clod heart the, and um, all of our other cuts that we've got from this as well. The clod heart is basically denuded, meaning it really has no fat on it um, at all. They call it a block ready clod heart. Now let's review what we've cut. We have the chuck roll, the chuck short ribs, the chuck flap, the pectoral meat, the mock tender, the vega steak, the top blade, the blade bone, the terrace major, the humerus, the clod heart, the brisket, and the foreshank. Now let's go ahead and break these down a little bit further. We're gonna start by breaking the brisket into the flat and the point. And I'm gonna go ahead and take apart that chuck roll. So separating that underblade, cutting some beautiful chuck eye steaks. You can even make some boneless country style short ribs and the ever popular chuck roast. This chuck flap is loaded with marbling. We're gonna cut these beautiful Denver steaks. Wow. Those look delicious. We're, we're gonna have those for dinner tonight. Yeah, that's, that's definitely dinner. Easily. Without question. And then I'm just gonna separate this top blade into the two flat irons just by following that seam down and gotta remove all of that silver skin. And the clod heart, once we seam that out, we can actually make some pub or ranch steaks, depending on where you're at in the country of what they're called. But this really makes a fantastic steak option. And look at all those fine flecks of marbling. I love that cut. Even roasting it whole is delicious. And then finally, we just need to make our short ribs a bit fancier. So we're gonna separate those and roll them up and make some beautiful asabuco style short ribs. Talk about fancy, that's pretty cool presentation. I know, I'm pretty cool. So this is just one way you can break down those subprimals, but look at the variety of steaks that we got from the chuck roll, those Denver steaks from the chuck flap, you made our asobuco style short ribs, we got our brisket point and our brisket flat, and then we also got our flat irons and our beautiful pub or ranch steaks. All right, let's get into that rib plate. So the first thing you have to do is go about two inches away from that longissimus dorsi, and we're removing the rib from the plate section. And for those of you that don't speak Latin, she's talking about the ribeye. You need to speak Latin, by the way. I mean, it just makes everything so much simpler if you do. And now I'm gonna take the more expensive part here and chine it, meaning we're gonna take off that vertebrae column. And normally we would do this, but the bandsaw, and it would only take a couple seconds, but we decided to do this by hand which is obviously the harder way. Suck it up, Buttercup. You gotta get some exercise in, all right? So while he's chining it, I need to go in and actually remove our skirt steaks. You gotta take a listen to this. Now this is a membrane that I need to remove in order to get to my outside and inside skirt steak. So removing that outside skirt steak, it's actually the diaphragm muscle. So it doesn't do a lot of heavy lifting in the animal. It's fairly tender cut um, and just needs a simple salt and pepper to have it taste good. And by fairly tender, she means extremely tender. Now that inside skirt steak, that actually is the muscle that holds up the big heavy rumen. So it needs a bit more of an acidic marinade in order to help break it down, but still a cut that's loaded with flavor and just great to use in a lot of Latin dishes. And I'm taking off the meaty back ribs, which if you put these in a smoker and let them set salt and pepper, they make amazing dish. We just had them a week ago for dinner. They were, they were incredible. Thanks. For the cap and wedge meat, that actually sits right underneath the ribeye, or that rib primal. And these make a fantastic thin meat option, especially for some of our value added processors. Now let's make some plate short ribs. I gotta come to the edge of that serratus ventralis and just make a parallel cut to the other cut that Daniel had with the rib separation. So now I'm making my beef belly and separating off those short ribs. And look at that marbling. It is incredible. I'm just gonna remove this lifter meat that sits on the back of those plate short ribs. 
Now that we have this lifter meat removed, we just need to cut our plate short ribs. So you count one, two, three, and our plate short ribs have three bones in them, while our chuck short ribs had four bones in them. I am trimming up the belly, also known as the navel um, or the short plate. This is actually one of the most heavily exported items, but it also can be used for some of our value added processors if they wanna make bacon. And who doesn't love beef bacon? Oh my gosh, it's incredible. Now to review the cuts that we got from the rib plate. We have the rib, the inside skirt, the outside skirt, the meaty back ribs, plate short ribs, beef belly or navel, cap and wedge meat, and rib lifter meat. Now let's go ahead and break these down a little bit further. And let's make some beautiful tomahawk short ribs out of those. Look at that marbling, my goodness, it's good. And the rib can be broken down into our ribeye steaks. What a classic steak dish. Now those plate short ribs, like I said, you remove them bone by bone, and you're just gonna pull that meat down. And once you get it to be able to fold, you can French the bone and tie it off, and you're gonna make some great tomahawk style short ribs. Now to review the cuts from the rib, we didn't do a lot of further fabricating, but we did go ahead and break our ribeye roll into our ribeye steaks and our short ribs into tomahawk style short ribs. We also rolled up our outside skirt steak and inside skirt steaks. Now that we've finished our forequarter, we're gonna move into the hindquarter, starting with the loin and flank. Just gonna remove that flank by pulling back on it and following those seams. This is a great cut that takes on marinade perfect. I'm going to remove the kidney fat, which is actually the only organ that's left on the carcass. And it also is sets right on top of the tenderloin. So while I'm doing this, I have to be very careful I don't score the Certified Angus Beef Prime Tenderloin. Just gonna come out of your paycheck if you do. Now just removing the tenderloin. You do have to be careful and make sure that your knife just follows the bone all the way down, those transverse process, but you simply just peel that back. Now this is a really tender muscle as I'm sure you are all aware of, so it is fairly delicate. So just don't pull too hard. Now, what I'm pulling out is going to be classified as a pismo tenderloin, peeled side muscle on tenderloin. It's definitely going to be trimmed down a bit more before it gets put into a box. However, this would be that whole piece. Now, you better be excited because we are now removing the sirloin flap. This is my favorite cut on the carcass. And you'll notice the muscle structure looks very similar to the outside skirt or the inside skirt. And I would say it's just as tender and just as good as the outside skirt. If you've not tasted the sirloin flap, you should probably reconsider your life choices. Now, removing that sirloin from the bone and strip loin, you go to that last lumbar vertebrae and go about halfway through just in front of the hip bone. Once you get through that bone, you just separate those two apart. And I'm going to take the bone in strip loin and make a zero by one boneless strip loin. You can see that we take about one inch from that longissimus dorsi or that loin muscle and saw through that very last rib, that 13th rib, to just remove our loin tail from our strip loin. To remove the bottom sirloin from the top sirloin, simply just follow the seam between that top sirloin and the ball tip. Just a cut that just goes straight down to the table. Now from there, I'll just roll out that ball tip away from the tri-tip. And then the tri-tip really just needs to be trimmed. About 80% of tri-tips sold come with the fat cap off or a peeled tri-tip. This is a cut that is extremely popular in the Western United States. Daniel's boning out that strip loin, and I'm just going to peel back this hip bone to make a boneless sirloin. Now to review the cuts that we got from our loin, we have the top sirloin, the strip loin, the loin tail, the flank, the tenderloin, and we have three cuts from the bottom sirloin, which include the ball, ball tip, tri-tip, tri sirloin flap. flap. Now let's break these cuts down a little bit further. I'm taking the strip loin and making some New York strips, which again are a very classic and tender steak option. That might be my favorite middle meat, not gonna lie. 
And then from there, I'm just removing that cap off the top sirloin, also called your culotte or picanha. This is really commonly found in your Brazilian steakhouses, left whole and roasted, but you can cut that into steaks and make some great looking, I like to call them mini New York strip steaks because that's exactly what they look like. I'm preparing the tenderloin or the pismo to cut some filet mignons. The first thing we do here is take off the chain um, from that. And you can do some, maybe cut that into some kebab meat or something of, of something similar. Um, but once you have that removed, you can make these into some fantastic steaks. I think we all are aware of what a filet mignon and how tender that is. Now the top sirloin, I'm actually gonna split that into a one thirds, two thirds parts just by following that seam down. The one thirds, you can cut into some sirloin fillets, also called baseball steaks. These are great value items. I mean, they look a lot like the tenderloin. They've got tremendous flavor. Then you could continue to cut steaks out of the other two thirds part, but I decided to split that in half and actually make some roast out of them and just add a little bit of finesse by tying it off. Now we got a lot of steaks out of this loin. We have our strip steaks, our fillets, our top sirloin fillets, our culotte steaks, and we even cut some bavette steaks as well. And we got steak tips and kebab meat. So there's just so much utilization that comes out of this loin flank primal. Now for the final round. Seriously though, the round is a great cut that has so much potential and it's often overlooked. The first thing we need to do is remove the oyster or the spider steak off the top of the H-bone. These are pretty small um, pieces and imagine how many it would take to fill up a bag, a lot. And the next thing actually requires a little bit of finesse. We have to get our knife between the femur bone and the H-bone to just get in there and remove the H-bone, get in between that bone and the muscle and we'll just pull this bone out, which will get us started on removing some of these other larger muscles. When he says H-bone, that's A-I-T-C-H, not the letter H. And for those that are curious, this is pretty close to getting a steamship round. You just have to make sure that that shank is Frenched. I am removing the inside round, also known as the top round, off of the top of the round. Round actually is made up of many large muscles with seams that connect them together. And you can see that as they separate this, that seam kind of pulls apart and makes this really a fairly simple primal to further fabricate. Now, since this side has already been aged for two weeks, I gotta do a little bit of trimming and remove some of that off the top round. And I'm removing the knuckle, also known as the sirloin tip. Again, just like the inside round, there's some fairly large seams that separate this and make this fairly easy to fabricate out. And you might think that that sirloin tip looks a lot like the ball tip, and that's because they're the same muscles, just a knife mark difference. And as I'm removing it, I'm actually gonna come right behind the patella or the kneecap to break this thing completely apart. Now we need to remove our femur. So we take our knife and just follow right along the femur bone to separate that. And then Diana is gonna work on taking the shank and trimming that up further. Now that gives us an entire gooseneck. And the gooseneck is actually three different pieces. And that's what we're gonna do is break it down into those three different pieces, starting with the heel. The heel sets right along that, the one side of the bottom round flat. So we need to go right along the seam. And I'm gonna hand that off to Diana so that she can further fabricate that into one of her favorite cuts, the Merlot. And then from then we have the eye of round still attached to the bottom round flat. So again, there's another nice seam that separates these two that we can run our knife along and separate them. As we get these round cuts separated, we just need to trim them up a bit and they'll be ready to go. And from our round, we get our femur bone and hind shank, our oyster steak, and our top, top round, round, bottom round, round eye of round, round knuckle. knuckle. Heel! Now there are many different ways that we could add value to all these cuts that come from the round. But we're gonna start with the bottom round. The bottom round is actually made up of the biceps femoris muscle, which is the same muscle that makes up the culotte. Now what's interesting is the culotte muscle sits right next to what we call the rump roast. And if we separate off the rump roast, we get this really high quality roast that eats very similar to the culotte. Now the heel, this is by far my favorite cut because there's just so much potential there. You've got the brazon in the middle and then you can go ahead and cut out this Merlot steak. Not many people are fabricating it, but they need to be. 
she's pretty obsessed with the heel, if you couldn't tell. Next, I'm going to take the eye of round and actually make a few stakes and also have a roast as well. Now I'm going to take the top round and actually remove the cap off of the top round and make a few London broils and then finish by leaving a whole top round roast. Let's round it out. From our round primal, we got many different steaks and roasts from our top round, bottom round, and eye of round. We also took our heel and made a brazon or Diana's favorite, the Merlot. Now there are many different ways that we could have done this, but this is just one way that we could really add some value to this round primal. Don't forget about the round. When you have certified Angus beef marbling, you really elevate those round cuts. Drop the knife. There you have it. We just fabbed a whole side of certified Angus beef. Look at all the cuts on one table. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Check that off the bucket list.